Hi there, welcome to my in-depth video on oxycodone. This video will learn you everything you need to know and I also made a shorter, more to the point video about how and when to use oxycodone. If this is more suitable for you, you can find the link in the description. And now let's get into it. First of all, a little disclaimer. The video is purely meant informational. Um, and if you want medical advice, please contact your own doctor. Now, oxycodone is an opioid and is an agonist for mu, kappa and delta receptors, which cause an analgesic, anxiolytic and sedative effect. And it, work much, it works much like morphine. The generic name is oxycodone and is known under all these brand names, like oxycodin, oxynorm, oxydose and all the other ones. And it's available in capsule, tablets and injections. It's mostly used for treatment of severe pain and it's used in severe post-operative pain. If you use it as a painkiller, make sure so to take a step-by-step -step approach where you go to the next step when there is insufficient pain, when there's contraindications for one of the steps or when you have a specific indication like uh, oncological pain where you need more pain killing so you start at a higher step, usually step four or five. So the first step is paracetamol which has a good effectiveness is cheap, safe, and has less side effects. If this is, however, insufficient, you go to the second step, NSIDs, like ibuprofen, naproxen, and you can combine this one with paracetamol as well. The next step would be low opioids, like tramadol, but also oxycodone. You can combine this with NSIDs and paracetamol as well. The next step is all oral or transdermal strong opioids, like fentanyl or morphine, and your last step is subcutaneous or intravenous strong opioids, mostly morphine, which is only used in hospital settings. Then, when do you take it? Um, take it at fixed times with water and wait between four to six hours between doses. Then you have the correct level, not too much and not too low, and you will not experience any pain peaks. How long can you use oxycodone? Um, usually till your complaints are over and then you gradually reduce your dosage under supervision of your doctor. Then if we're looking at safety, uh, for driving you need to wait two weeks after starting oxycodone before you, it's safe to drive. Um, and you need those two weeks to see if you are experiencing any side effects like drowsiness, confusion or dizziness. And if so, um, it's unsafe for you to drive while using oxycodone and you can do so. But if you're not experiencing any of these side effects, then you can start driving after two weeks. For alcohol, alcohol increases the side effects you may experience from oxycodone, so it's not really safe to use alcohol. You can try one glass um, maximum a day. And for food, uh, don't eat any grey food because this also will increase the side effects you're experiencing. For dosage, if you're taking oxycodone in chronic severe pain, in adults or ch children older than 12 years, an oral dose of 5 mg every 4 to 6 hours is allowed. And if you're taking regulated release capsules, a dose of 10 mg every 12 hours would be correct. Then increase the dose based on pain experience and tolerance that is built up. And you can increase it maximally 50 to 100% every 24 hours. And if you want to switch from oral morphine with regulated release to oxycodone with regulated release, uh, 20 milligrams oral morphine is the same as 10 milligrams oxycodone. So take that into consideration. Then if you're using oxycodone as post-operative pain in adults and you want to give it IV intravenously, you can give 1 to 10 milligrams of diluted solution of 1 milligrams per milliliter every 4 hours. And subcutaneous, you can give 5 mg of diluted solution of 1 mg per milliliter every 4 hours. This, however, is only uh, applicable for in-hospital situations. Regarding side effects, oxycodone has many side effects. I named some of them here. Um, in more than 10% of all cases, we see sedation of drowsiness, constipation, nausea, vomiting, headaches or itching. And in 1-10% to of all cases, we see any of these. I won't name them all, uh, feel free to pause the video to give it a closer look. Um, in Uncommon we see any of these and rarely we see any of these side effects. Once again I won't name them all, feel free to pause the video. 
It's important, however, if you think that you may be experiencing one of these side effects or any of the others, check your description and also contact your doctor to see if your dose needs to be adapted or maybe you need to switch medications. Then, oxycodone has many interactions and it's important to note that it's a substrate for CYP3A4 and CYP2D6. And there are some inhibitors of this substrate. I named them here, some macrolide antibiotics, uh, protease inhibitors and some others. And these inhibitors will um, lower your dose, so will lower the amount of oxycodone in your blood and therefore will lower its pain-killing effects. Um, and there are also inducers of the substrate which are rifapensin, carbamazepine and some others. And they may increase the oxycodone in your blood and therefore uh, can lead more easily to overdose or more side effects. So take it into consideration and adjust your dose based on inhibitors or inducers which are used as co-medication. Then when oxycodone is combined with central depressants like alcohol, other opioids, antipsychotics, anxiolytics and some more, this may, late, uh, may lead to increased depressive effects on the central nerve system which can lead to respiratory depressions or enhanced sedation. Therefore, always use the lowest possible dose in this situation for the shortest amount of time and follow your patients carefully to see if it's not going wrong. Then, when oxycodone or any other morphine-like uh, medication is taken together with MAO inhibitors, this may lead to serotogenetic, uh, serotonergic syndrome. And therefore, after, uh, if you use a MAO inhibitor, wait two weeks till it's safe to start using oxycodone or any other morphine-like medication. So that's important. Regarding pregnancy, oxycodone passes the placenta and may lead to respiratory depressions or neonatal opioid absence syndrome. And therefore, it's advised to only do, uh, use it on strict indication, but preferably don't use it at all. And for lactation, oxycodone passes in breast milk and its effects are not really clear, but it's not advised that you use it because it could be harmful for the child. There are also some contraindications. Severe so respiratory depressions with hypoxia is a contraindication. Same can be said for asthma, COPD, cyanosis, uh, recent brain traumas or increased uh, intracranial pressure, delirium tremens, coma or convulsive disorders, acute hepatic disorders or renal or hepatic impairment and lastly chronic constipation and then some warnings start with half of the dose when a patient has a kidney or liver insufficiency hypothyroidism myxedema elderly patients or by comorbid patients stop giving oxycodone when there's a paralytic ileus Regarding habituations and dependence, you don't need to stop abruptly with giving oxycodone, but reduce the dose um, slowly because it can otherwise lead to withdrawal symptoms like sweating, anxiety, agitation, convulsions, and so on. And we don't want to experience those. Then there can be hyperalgesia unresponsiveness to dose increases. So, this is a person which keeps experiencing pain even if you increase the dose. And we see that mostly when high doses of oxycodone are given. And what you need to do then is reduce the dose or switch to another opioid so it can be effective again. Then lastly, oxycodone can also affect the HPA axis or the HPG axis. And this may lead to increased levels of prolactine and reduced levels of cortisol and testosterone. So take that into consideration. Then, in case of an overdose, some will have respiratory depression, stupor, coma, meiosis, hypothermia, bradycardia, muscle weakness, pulmonary edema, hypertension, and or a shock. And you need to look out for these symptoms, because then the therapy would be intravenously 0.2 mg naloxone at 1 mg every 2 hours after the initial gift. And in severe overdoses, you can even give... 0.8 milligrams naloxone and repeat this every two to three minutes till the symptoms are gone. And on my last slide, 
some kinetic data. The resorption is fast, T-max is with one and a half hour, it's metabolized by the liver, and within three hours, uh, half of the oxycodone in your blood is cleared. So, this was my in-depth uh, video on oxycodone. I also made a shorter one, which is more suitable for patients on how and when to take oxy oxycodone. You can find that one in the description. Uh, please feel free to subscribe if you want to see other videos on uh, how to use certain medications or on uh, diseases and the treatment. Thank you for watching and see you soon.